thank you, Frank, for being here. Thanks for having us. Please tell us, what do you do in Halo 4? So I'm Frank O'Carr, I'm the Franchise Development Director on Halo 4, and that means that I work with uh, lots of different teams on lots of different areas, a lot of story. Uh, I work with our narrative team on the, on the fiction for the game, uh, on, on building the team in the first place, uh, and on the extended franchise and the extended universe, so lots and lots of different things. So tell us about the main feature here in the main features here in Halo 4, like the multiplayer mm -hmm. and story. Yeah. I mean, it's in some ways it's a pretty traditional extension of, of Halo. Every single Halo game has added significant new features uh, and innovations over the years. Um, this is uh, the story uh, takes place right after the events of Halo 3. We're going to see the Master Chief again. We're going to see Cortana again. We're going to find out about their fate and their destiny. Uh, we're also going to explore, explore a new alien world, which I think was one of the things that attracted people to Halo in the first place, was the ability to, to see this new place and explore it and, and use the tools that the game gives you to do that. Um, in terms of multiplayer, we've made some really significant changes. We've now added a, a meaningful career progression system. So uh, instead of just changing your armor and your appearance, you can now change your ability and change the types of weapons that you can carry onto the field of combat. And that's connected uh, very directly to a brand new mode, a brand new mode for Halo and a new way for us to deliver Halo content, period, which is called Spartan Ops. It's a weekly episodic content, kind of like a TV show that you play. Every week there will be an episode of fiction, and it's a really cool story. It takes place about six months after the events of Halo 4. And with each of those episodes of the, what we, you could call a TV show, uh, it comes with five episodes of gameplay. Uh, five missions that you can play with up to four players. It's best enjoyed cooperatively. You can play it on your own if you like. You can adjust the difficulty to suit. And that adds a tremendous amount of content to the game, obviously, but also a completely new way to experience the story with your friends uh, and experience the gameplay as it relates to the story. Okay. So do you think Halo 4 is an, is an evolution of the saga or a reboot in terms of gameplay? Um, it's... it's it's definitely an evolution of the saga, but we found that when we give people the controller who've played Halo for the last 10 years, they immediately know what to do. And that was one of the, the core principles that we had to get right, uh, first, first and foremost. Halo is fun because it plays like Halo. It wouldn't be fun if it played like another game, and it has to, be, it has to feel right when we put the controller in people's hands. That said, Halo games have changed every single time, uh, and mostly for the better. And, uh, and we wanted to follow in that tradition. And so we, we've done some things to speed up the gameplay. Uh, in multiplayer, your encounters are going to be a little bit faster and the whole experience is going to be a little bit faster and smoother. And in campaign, you have a brand new enemy to fight, the Prometheans. And so not only do you have the first new enemy class in Halo since 2001 when the first game came out, you also have all the weapons and powers that those aliens bring to this, this uh, universe. And so it's the biggest expansion of, of weapons and powers and uh, environments that the, the Halo universe has ever had. Okay, now tell me about the difference, the main difference between working with Bungie and now working with 343. Um, in some ways it's similar. I think both teams are really committed to excellence and to trying to, to push things forward and to innovate, but uh, there's definitely a different cultural feel at, at 343. And the, and the irony is that it was, uh, we, we had to start this team from scratch very, and build it very quickly. Um, because we were working on Halo and because it's such a well-loved project, we were able to hire some of the best and brightest from some of the best game studios in the world and from all over the world. So the culture is very different. It feels very different and it feels absolutely focused and in orbit around this one shared goal and passion, which is Halo. And I didn't think about that when we were building the team. I thought it's going to be hard to hire people. Um, they're not going to have anything in common. They're coming from all these different places. But the reality was that they really did have something in common, which was a love of Halo. Uh, that gave us two advantages. One was they were bringing techniques and talents and abilities and skills from some of the best games in the world. But the, the other advantage was even each and every one of those people fully understood what it was that made Halo special. They didn't want to break it. They didn't want to wreck it. They wanted to expand upon it and build upon it and evolve it. And, and I think that was one of the, the unexpected advantages that we got from that process. Okay, now this is, this is a fun question. Uh, tell me about the importance of teabagging in multiplayer in Halo. I, I've never heard the expression teabagging. No? Uh, but uh, you may be referring to victory crouching. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, the uh, fans fans like to to celebrate in exciting ways when they <laughs> when they win games and demonstrate their dominance and their ebullience and and uh, and general uh, pleasure at winning. 
And there are lots of different ways to do that. I think that as we're talking about victory crouching, one of the best victory crouches in the new game is uh, accomplished via the Mantis, which is this giant mech robot, which has a, a very pendulous counterweight that, that keeps it balanced. But we actually spent a long time working on the animation. So the victory crouches uh, were possible in the Mantis, and it's the by far the most spectacular way to teabag uh, anything in the game. Okay, now finally, uh, this is a serious question for Dell School. Illegally downloaded Halo 4. Yeah. Um, I, the same thing I'd say to anyone who's, who's illegally downloading and using software. Uh, it, 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 damages the, it damages the market. It, it, it's, uh, it's the same, same thing is true for movies. It means that there's less incentive for, for companies to make great art if they know that it's just going to be freely distributed. Um, the, the reality is that there are still you know, millions of Halo fans waiting patiently till November 6th and uh, much of the damage is, uh, comes from spoiling the story, and it's the same with movies. Uh, and that's the thing that I, I'm concerned about. Microsoft's investigating, it will take action where necessary. But, you know, my message is don't do it. It's, it's, not, good for, it's not good for you, it's not good for other players, and it's not good for the industry. Everyone knows that, and there's, I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know. Okay, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Kiki Wolfkill. I'm the executive producer on Halo 4, so, uh, I'm uh, in charge of the, the whole the game and the business and uh, was tasked with building a team to create Halo 4. Okay, now tell me, uh, why do you think uh, Halo has become so popular all over the years? Well, I think Halo is, is unique because it's not just sort of this addictive gameplay, but it's also a universe. And, you know, it, it, it is a place that you, you visit and you inhabit and there are characters that you feel a connection to and uh, you know so I think it has unique gameplay in the sort of the sandbox nature of the game and the fact that you know when you play through the experience you have may be completely different from your friends um, and those are stories you can share um, obviously it's always been known for innovating uh, particular in multiplayer but you know I think that the foundation of all of those Halo experiences is that universe and the characters okay now tell me about mm, you as an executive producer, uh, what is the future of gaming consoles with Kale being uh, like the killer app for Xbox yeah. and Xbox 360? I mean, ironically, uh, you know, we're first party. So, uh, you know, the Xbox platform uh, is part of Microsoft as is 343. But we really think about, when we think about the future, we think about it from uh, an experience standpoint, like what are the future experiences versus what is the future technology and platform. Um, and, you know, we, we think a lot about, you know, how entertainment is changing, you know, and, and how games and entertainment are merging and, and how, how players and consumers are um, viewing, playing, listening to entertainment and how that changes over the years. And so, you know, for us, uh, Spartan Ops, is an example of sort of experimenting with some different models with gaming. You know, this idea you can tune in every week, it'll be delivered weekly, there's a story aspect and a cooperative gameplay aspect. You know, those are things that we think about as to how does that sort of thing evolve. And so, you know, I think, uh, I think it's hard to say what the future of consoles is. I think it's interesting to think about what the future of entertainment is and what does a device need to do to deliver on that? No, tell me, what is the future for the Halo franchise? So, you know, uh, we have a lot of different ideas. You know, when we started, when we sat down, even before we, we in earnest started working on the, the design for Halo 4, um, we started with story. And we started about, you know, what is Master Chief's journey? Where do we want to take the player? What are the characters and worlds we want to introduce? Um, and so that story goes far beyond Halo 4. And you know, we'll explore it in different ways. Part of why we call it the, the Reclaimer Saga is because we want to be able to tell those stories, you know, in different places. Maybe it's a game, maybe it's live action, maybe it's a novel. Like we, we, we want that freedom to be able to express um, those stories in different ways. And uh, you know, we look at Halo 4 as the start of that next generation um, of gaming and, and frankly, uh, storytelling experiences. The same question. The same question for Frankie. What can you say for those who 
illegal item that would get paid for. You know, it, it, it's disappointing when uh, something that you and, and uh, a really passionate, hardworking team have uh, taken so long to build um, and really put heart and creative passion into. You know, there, there is um, a story we want to tell and there is an, a, a, an emotional experience we want to deliver. And so it's disappointing to spend so many years working on that only to have, um, you know, to have pieces of that starting to get leaked out and, and spoiled for other people. Um, you know, as a company, we'll look at, you know, those things and, and figure out what we can or can't do f about them. But, you know, I would say just from a creative perspective, it's, it's disappointing. And I, I hope for the, the fans of Halo that, you know, they can keep uh, their, their blinders on until November 6th so they can really experience the, the whole game. So finally, what is your message for those Halo fans who are waiting until... Thank you for being patient uh, and being disciplined and waiting until November 6th. And, you know, we really, really hope that you feel it's been worth it. Same place we are.